first note, this is still more or less unofficial. I'm still engaged in what might be interpreted as my extended hiatus slash sabbatical away from these video upload commentary things. And part of that had to do with um, circumstances which were beyond my control, but taking advantage of that, I also decided that it did me very well to take an extended breather away from all the backbiting, the cat fighting, and the histrionics that are just seem to be permeating now throughout these uh, video exchanges to where it's not even worth the effort mo much of the time anymore. And I'm, I'm actually at a point now where I'm really pushing myself to get myself psyched up and motivated to where I actually even want to do this anymore. It's just gotten that bad that I just really keep finding myself distancing myself away from it, uh, even though that there's still quite a bit on my plate that I would like to get out, that I would like to share eventually, and uh, that's still going to be coming. I haven't given up entirely on that. There's still too much that I really need to do and I need to express. And for whatever listening ears there are out there that will actually value some of what I say, or at least give it some thought and work with it a little bit and just uh, consider a different point of view or whatnot, then, you know, that's basically all I'm, what I'm about anyway. As I said, I'm not trying to do this to win any popularity contest by no means. But, <clears throat> but still, uh, opinions and thoughts and perspectives that come from different areas where most people either try to avoid touching upon them or just try to block out and they just need somebody who's to scream in their ears regardless anyway. That's pretty much where I see myself as taking the, um, the high road of uh, controversial and the, uh, the touchy, sticky stuff that most people either want to avoid or they just go to the extreme and blow it completely out of proportion and then put on this whole act of a victim complex when they get called out on stuff like that. And so, as I was saying, I was just kind of getting tired of that whole thing to where nobody likes to engage in real debate anymore. They just want to play these emotional histrionic games and pull every trick out of the hat that they can to heap upon themselves so they can, they, they can claim some sort of victim status or cl supposedly claim the moral high ground of virtue or some mess of that sort. And it gets tiring. It gets extremely tiring. And so, <clears throat> as I was saying earlier, I took the opportunity primarily because of my circumstances, but... I carried that over into saying, you know what, just give me a break from all this nonsense and let me uh, know what it's like to breathe free and without a whole bunch of stress for a change. And um, as I say, the longer that I stay away from it, the more I find myself really not, not wanting to dive back into this nonsense. But as I was saying too, I can't get away from it completely because I do want to address a number of issues which are still burning and that are that I do want to actually get out there and stoke the flames with. So <clears throat> I'll be going into a little bit more detail about that later on. But I do want to explain part of the reason as to why I decided to jump back in just a little early, a little bit ahead of of my originally planned schedule. And um that's because that even though I still more or less distance myself away from this whole uh, interactive thing about these uh, uploaded commentaries and people interacting with one another, one another. See, it's not just myself putting a restriction on my own interactions here, but I've also carried that over into more or less just closing off from all the rest of the drama that's taking out out there also. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that's been happening on these online forums right now, which I'm mostly oblivious to, because 
I just refuse to see myself delving into it any further. I, it's, it doesn't do me any good. And most of the time, I'm really not learning much of anything, except just to see how much of a big bunch of whiny crybabies that are still out there who, for all this time passing, still can't get over themselves. So <clears throat> I just let that go, and i just like, well, if I'm going to do anything online that has anything to do with anybody doing video uploads or anything, I'm just going to see who's doing something fun or exciting or see what the latest news about something is, or I'll see if I can catch some little obscure movie that I, that I was interested in that I came across and see what that's all about, or anything that involved research or something, you know, anything other than just the histrionic drama, you know. So it's just, I just felt the need to just take a break for, away from all that stuff. But every rare so often, I would come back in and I would check to see what some of the people that I'm more interested in who have some stuff that I think is some of some substance, which I feel I can actually learn a little bit from, every so-and-so such a time, I will actually come in and I'll just, you know, click on and just, okay, you know, so the title heading seems to be interesting and let me see what, it, what they're talking about and uh, just kind of like to keep up a little bit on, like I said, some more, more of the realer stuff, not all this histrionic drama nonsense. So what kind of um, pushed me to the forefront now, <clears throat> as I said, a little bit early ahead of schedule, is um, that I just recently um, came across and finished listening to... Um, Soul and Black's interaction with Black Authority, and uh, of course, uh, actually, I started off listening uh, to too much of uh, uh, Soul and Black's rebuttal. I had kind of wanted to uh, listen to Black Authority's uh, little radio uploads that he had done, kind of see what he's talking about. But um, Soul had uploaded a um, a commentary about when he had called into the show and he was kind of giving his perspective and whatnot. And it got to the point where it's like, well, let me go back and check the source material, see exactly what they were discussing, what it was all about. And so I took a bit of a deflection to just go to listen to that segment uh, that involved uh, his um, discussion with Black Authority. And it just comes back around to my my whole uh, perspective on this whole thing, my whole just my whole outlook on this whole discussion, this general discussion about our black identity. I just keep coming back to the same unheard question, or or not unconsidered question, I should say, because I'm constantly raising the question, and people keep hearing the question. But nobody's really taking it into consideration. And the question I keep asking is, are we still on this BS? Are we still fighting this little pity-ass fight about what's truly black and what's not black and what constitutes black identity and what constitutes um, helping out the black community or you know, who has the uh, final authority, no pun intended, to declare that, you know, how much of your blackness is credible and how much of that, what you do determines your uh, participation in the black community or as uh, Soul has uh, put the new spin on it, which I think I'm going to adopt myself rather than calling it the black community, just call it the black populace because we're far from a community. Uh, we've long since never been a community, and I've pretty much been explaining that almost since from day one that I've been here. In fact, from day one since I've been here on, on HuTube, or like, well, I, I should say that's where it started. But, of course, I'm carrying over into other areas because I do want to get away from aligning myself or associating myself with what used to be YouTube. So since it's not YouTube anymore, it's HuTube, then I, I still make the same points. I just do it on my own terms. But still, as I say, from day one of my actually interacting and trying to share my thoughts and feelings, 
my whole gripe from that very moment has always been we are not a true community. There's nothing that really, that's uh, cohesive that really binds us together as a genuine collective other than either our skin tone, which of course, you know, go figure, people want to make a big issue about that, whether or not, you know, you have to be a certain shade of brownness in order to be considered real black, never mind that for every genetic test that's ever been done in this country, not a single person who has history, native history here in this country is pure black. We've all been diluted with something. So if you want to put place your black creds on our pure black uh, uh, biological lineage, that ain't happening in the United States, I'm sorry. So, so that part of your argument really goes by the wayside. But they either light level blackness down to what your skin tone or, or how dark you are, whatever it is, or it gets involved with, well, what's your identity? How do you identify yourself? Or, as usually is the case, how do others identify you? Because we seem to have that uniqueness and maybe with the exception of uh, the Latino community, which they get a little bit more leeway. But ours is the only community where if you mix black or what we consider black with anything other than black, whatever you produce as a result of that uh, joining together, that product of that joining gets declared as black. Welcome to the real world. I'm not saying it's right or it's wrong or it's indifferent. I'm just saying that's the way it is, which is why I got into uh, a uh, very intense disagreement with uh, You Heard Me First Time, uh, a.k.a. Uh, Gotta Be Kidding Me, when uh, she also uh, took the position that in order to make black babies, both the male and the female producing a child also have to be black, which is totally ridiculous and ludicrous and nonsense. From a technical standpoint, absolutely. There's no question about that because anytime you take uh, black and you put white together and, and you mix the two together, you get gray. You don't get black and you don't get white. You get a combina combination or an admixture of the two. And depending on the strength of the one color or the other color will, determ will determine to what shade of gray that you get. So in that sense, you know, you're absolutely right. So if you put a black man and a, and a white woman together or a yellow man and a black woman together or whatever, whatever however you mix it up, um, technically speaking, you're absolutely correct. The end product is not going to be black. However, we do live in a society where, yes, race matters. Again, should it matter? Of course not. Again, just as uh, Soul tried to remind us about uh, King's legacy, the content of one's character, not the color of one's skin or one's cultural identity. However, that being set aside, we do live in a society that declares that people are designated based upon their supposed racial origins and the way that it works in the United States of America, and in fact in most of the world, they look at anything that's darker than a brown paper bag as, well, if you mix that with anything else, then the end result is going to be whatever was darker than that brown paper bag. Again, I'm not saying that's right, wrong, or indifferent. I'm saying that is exactly what it is. And we have to recognize that reality, and we have to deal with it, or we have to change people's attitudes about it. There is no other way around that. So, in living in the United States of America, as it is, we have to acknowledge the fact that you can't get away from being black just because your mama was white. Or, in my case, I use a very derogatory term. I, I refer to myself as quarter cracker which um, that's an indication of uh, my Caucasian ad admixture. You know, the uh, other quarter is uh, Native American Indian. So, you know, between those two, that's half of who or what I am in a very genetic sense. 
The other half constitutes what is referred to as African American or of African origin. That's my genetic reality. However, in my mind, or as I perceive myself, or as I present myself to people, I express myself and I clearly state that, look, if you want to label me or level me down to a specific identity, you can call me black. That's what I've known. That's what I've accepted. That's what I realize. That doesn't discount everything else that's, that's in me. And when it comes time to break it down, like, say, on the census or with this um, Obamacare uh, Affordable Health Act that I just signed up for, you know, there are a list of multiple questions which say, you know, check off what your racial identity, check all that apply. And you better believe I checked off every single one that applied to me. Now, does that mean that I'm ashamed of one or the other? I'm ashamed of my blackness because I did that? No, absolutely not. In fact, that affirms my blackness, but the fact that I can say that I have these other things which are a part of what make me who and what I am. So there's no denying whatsoever. If I were ashamed of my blackness, I would have just as easily said, no, I'm Native American Caucasian. And if anybody else pointed the finger and said, you black, i just get up in their face and i challenge them on it. See, that's if I was ashamed of my blackness. But see, I'm not ashamed of my blackness. Now, I'll grant you this. I am ashamed of black folk, typically, because in order for me to identify with my blackness, I have to identify with a larger group and a larger collective. And I don't like what I see in a larger group and a larger collective. We are much better than this. From what we are presenting to the world out there as the representation of what it means to be black, it's a sad commentary on who and what we are because it overrides who and what we can be. We have a much greater potential. Why do you suppose that the slave owners and the slave masters and, and all these other white supremacists constantly kept holding us down underfoot? You know, never teach a nigger to read, never give a nigger an education, uh, never teach him proper grammar, always make him subservient and wrote and cast his eyes to the ground and never let him explore, you know, his, his uh, greater potential. Why do you suppose they did that? You think maybe it might have had something to do with the fact that if they just cut those chains off of us and just let us go hog wild and explore the, the full recesses of our minds and, and to exert ourselves creatively with all the capaci capacity of our creativity that we can bring to this world, that we would be non-stoppable? And I say this all the time. I get people that, black people now, who are always complaining about, oh, that's unrealistic talking about that if we do things the white man's way and blah, 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 if it's going to help us in any sort of a way. You better believe it's going to help us. Because, number one, it's going to give us access to the same power and control that he wields over us. And once we rein, rein that in and uh, take charge of, of it ourselves, we show time and again. In every instance where a white man, who are, or the power brokers, let me say, let me put it that way, anytime the power brokers have opened the door for us, even a crack, and let a few of us bum rush in, it takes no time at all for us to excel and do better. That's always been the way it's been for us. Once we drop those slave shackles off of our brains and really go out and go hog wild with the with the access to the same opportunities that they reserve for themselves all these times, we become an unstoppable force. And see, they knew this early on, which is why they kept suppressing us, and it took all this time, all these centuries later, for white guilt to settle in so that their little uh, touchy-feely bleeding hearts can say, oh, we're sorry, let's make amends for it, and, you know, let's... Let's try to make things fair and balanced. But see, by that time, it was too damn late because we decided that we would much rather stay stuck in that mindset of conditioning of that whole slave mentality thing that we refused to see our own potential even when it was dropped right at our feet. We wanted to keep making excuses because it was easier to make excuses. We wanted to keep... Um, Complain, complaining about how the man was keeping us down or how we're not being allowed to do this, that, or the other because it's easier to just take a, a cop-out move like that and to sit on our ass and to be a victim. It's easy to be a victim. It is 
difficult to actually go out and do something with your life and to set an example and to strive for excellence. And this has always been my complaint about the black community. This is why I'm ashamed or that, that I feel shame that I have to identify because it has nothing to do with my sh being ashamed of who and what I am. I've never been ashamed of that. My shame comes from what are we doing as a collective to actually take that potential and really just go hog wild with it and take over. Oh, well, we can't take over. We can't do anything like that because we're only 12% of the population. And so we can't take control of everything. Uh, South Africa, anyone? Zimbabwe, anyone? Or back when it was called Rhodesia? How much of a percentage of the uh, <clears throat> populace there was uh, non-African? Hmm? I, I, my hands up to my ears. I'm, I'm listening. United States of America, anyone? Uh, remember the, the uh, indigenous people that, that used to live here and that used to populate this continent in the millions? Uh, gee, where are they now? Aha. Uh -huh. Who's in control now? Aha. Uh -huh. So see, that whole excuse about, oh, just because we're a minority, we can't take control of it. Why do you suppose white people own the world? Because they went to every corner of the world as a minority. They set foot and established themselves as a minority. And even as a minority, they took over many parts of the world. So don't tell me it can't be done. It can be done. You just have to want it. You just want, have to say that it's important enough for us as a collective, as a group, as an identity, as a race, to say that, hey, we want to have some control over the, the way that this world operates. And then just change your mindset, go do it. Now, that's what it means to be black first. And so when Soul and Black and Black Authority got into this whole uh, discussion again, once again on this whole thing about what qualifies as black cred. And a all black authority is one of those types. Now, you know, the man's you know, he's he's intelligent and he's got the the fire to see want to see, you know, black people excel and do things. But again, people like black authority are just talk. And they're all hype. And you know, being just talk is one thing. I'm just talk. Because I let it be known from the get-go. I ain't doing nothing for the black community. Straight up. Now, people can take that for whatever they want to take it for and say that, you know, oh, I'm, I'm a traitor to my race and all stuff. Have at it. Go right ahead. You know, I'll wear that badge of, and with honor and dignity. Because for the time being, so far, black people or the black community or the black collective or the black populace or however you want to refer to it as, they ain't done jack to show me that it's worth my time and effort to actually go out there and bust my nose wide open in order to try to help advance us along when we don't want to be advanced. So you want to call me a race trader? Feel free. Go, go straight ahead. Have at it. Have a happy. But see, I, I'll acknowledge that, yes, I am just talk. Because that's all I can do right now. Because I'm not going to put forth the effort if I'm not going to see a benefit or a reward coming as a result of my efforts. Why am I going to keep shooting myself in the foot to try to advance a cause and nobody else is going to get behind the cause? That's number one. And number two, for those who are always chatting, talking about, well, we want solutions. We're going to, we're going to, we need to do this. We need to do that. Well, okay, well, are you doing it? Saul and Black is one of those brothers who actually is trying to do it. Yet, he gets short shrift because he advocates um, black people um, not wanting to deal with black women if they so choose not to. Even while they're saying, well, hey, I ain't surrendered my blackness. But, you know, just because I ain't surrendered my blackness doesn't, does not automatically mean that I'm just going to limit myself to a black partner if I can't find quality within my own community. Now, if I want to, quote, keep it black, unquote, that badly, then I've got Brazil, I've got South Africa, I've got Nigeria, I've got anywhere in the Caribbean, I've got options. 
for somebody who's not on the same kick that's within my own pool right here. And remember, I used that analogy numerous times about uh, wading through an Olympic-sized swimming pool full of cheap rhinestones, getting cut the F up, and damn near bleed, uh, bloodletting yourself to death, just trying desperately to find a couple of one of one of a couple of dozen of precious fine cut diamonds that's in that deep pool of uh, cheap rhinestones that are cutting you to F up. Easier to say the heck with that. I'm going to go down to the local jewelry store in somebody else's community. Hello. And I'll just do the simple and easy thing and purchase something of value. So, oops, there goes uh, kid brother general backlash uh, advocating interracial dating. You betcha. You bet your ass. And I'm doing it for black men who want to date out. I'm doing it for those few decent black women out there who see the pool of black men as being less than honorable or less than desirable. As like, hey, if you got other options, feel free. I'll, I'll be one of the first ones who will not say a word to you onward about it. Because I see reality for what it is. And I keep explaining to people. It's like, look, especially in this whole thing about the so-called black gender war or this black community, keep it black sort of a thing. I'm a realist, okay? Sure, black first, all you want to. If you want to take time, efforts, and put forth the energies and the finances and the resources and all that stuff to help build up the African-American community, you have my blessing. I will not stop you. I will say you're probably being a fool. I mean, if you can prove me wrong, then I'll eat a little bit of crow and I'll say, hey, okay, you proved me, proved to me that, hey, it can be done on some level. And so I'll accept the loss. I've got a problem with that. I want to see us succeed. I want to see people who say, hey, the black community is not a lost cause, and I'm going to go out there and I'm going to help prove it. And when you show that you've got the ability to actually make some positive changes, I'll applaud you, and I'll look like I've got a little bit of egg on my face because I said you're wasting your time. But if you can prove to me you're not wasting your time, then, as I said, okay, a little bit of egg smeared on my face, but hey, you know what? I'll wear that egg with pride and dignity because I say somebody's making a difference. And it's going to bring us up a few notches, and it's going to stop us from being the objects of derision in everybody else's eyes. We're on our way up, and that's what I want to see. But until I actually start seeing it, I'm just going to say, hey, it's a waste of time, it's a waste of effort, it's a waste of your energies and resources and whatnot. But if that's what you want to do, and if you uh, want to take the position of hope springs eternal, you have my blessing. But don't expect me to just um, dive right in and say that, uh, hey, I'm going to go on the same bandwagon with you, and I'm going to pull in with you, and I'm going to help you a lot. Ah. My idea of helping the black community is helping me and my own black family. That's as far as it goes with me. You know, so me, black first to me means I'm going to help the one that stares back at me in the mirror and anyone else who's uh, the, my most closest associates, which means my own family. Outside of that, don't know you. Unless I see something that makes me want to invest. That I think, yeah, okay, yeah, we can do this. But not until then. But see, black first, in my mind, means you got to do for yourself first. And that means that if doing for myself means that I want to have a black family, but I can't do it with the pool of black women in this society or in this, in this country or in this modern day and age, and my best bet is to make black babies or if you want to get technical with it, half black babies or whatever the heck it is, some, with somebody else outside of the black collective, as I've said repeatedly, and I mean this especially for, for the uh, black men, because we're the ones screaming and hollering, complaining the loudest, so I have to look at us as you know, being the, uh, the foremost examples of this. 
but I say in this whole gender war thing where black men are talking about all the shortcomings of black women, which, by the way, many of them have to do with black men not stepping their game up. And that's what I try to tell these black women who think I'm just black women bashing. I'm like, sisters, you're not listening to me. I'm not bashing you. I'm actually bashing the black men because where you are right now, where you are the at the low end of the totem pole to where you're not desirable in anybody's eyes, especially in the eyes of your black men, there's only so much blame that you get to wear for that because you wouldn't be down that far were it not for the fact that your black men don't care about the fact that you're down there like that. Now, see, if black men were truly black men, i.e. men of virtue, men of decency, men of character, they would not sign on to you uh, degrading yourselves like you do. You would not be in a position to where black men would say, oh, I'm not ever going to mess with a black woman. I'm going to jump the fence. I'm not even going to mess with a black woman, man. Black women are done here. They don't take care of themselves. Well, whose fault is that? Yes, it's your fault, black woman, for buying into that BS that, that says that, uh, oh, you got to go around looking like a tramp and a hoe and you got you uh, you can keep uh, settling for less than the best because either, number one, uh, black men have put it in your brain that you want somebody with swag or you want somebody with some rough edges and your hormones are telling you, yeah, that's the way to go about it and everything, and they keep playing into that stuff. And so while you're playing into taking the the less than, than honorable of, of the pool of black men, you dishonor yourselves by playing the game that they want you to play, which is, oh, you a bitch, you a hoe, you, uh, you ain't worth nothing, I ain't going to marry you, you're just uh, good enough for, for me to, for, uh, to be my sperm dumpster. And so you allow these black men to degrade you. That's your fault that you fall into that trap. But it's really black men's fault because they're, they're, like, they're not being black men. A black man would demand, no, we're not going to treat our sisters like that. We're not going to accept them when they treat themselves like that. And any black man that decides to treat our sisters that way, we are going to admonish them. And we're going to tell them, look, we don't do it that way. Our sisters are worth respect. We're going to treat them like the queens that they should be treated like. So we need to get our acts together and let them know that, look, we only want the best in black females, and if you don't measure up, then we don't want you. But it's not going to be because, um, oh, uh, we're just looking for an excuse to date up, but we're going to really say that, look, we're going to be the best men that we can possibly be. Women, you need to catch up. And if black women don't want to catch up, then uh, there's plenty of others on the so-called other side of the fence that will see our potential and see our worth and see our value, and they'll come over to our side until you wake up and realize that, look, we're going to go in a different direction. We're not going to be the kind of sorry-ass men that just sit around and make babies out of wedlock, or we're just going to uh, you know, uh, be the worst example of men that there, that there are. We're going to become men of honor, and we're going to be a prize that any woman would want, not just a black woman, but any woman would want. But see, our problem is we don't measure up to that standard. And the reason why we don't measure up to that standard falls back into the lap of the black women. So there's this vicious, endless, perpetual cycle. It's like we're all on this, on this Mobius strip. Black women won't change because black men won't change, which is true. But black men won't change because black women won't change, which is also true. So everybody's bickering, pointing the fingers back and forth to one another, saying, you need to change. And the other one's saying, no, you need to change. And nobody's changing. And so the very rare few that that are stuck in that cycle saying, hey, I want to get off that cycle. Let's try to find, let's try to meet somewhere in between to where like attracts like. But unfortunately, there's too much of a minefield that you have to go through in order to find that right one. And it's easier to just say, no, I'm not going to go trekking through the minefield and the next thing you know, I step on something and I blow half my leg off. It's much easier to just say, hey, I'll just stay in the city and I'll just go ahead and I'll find somebody who's outside of the minefield, and I'll live happily ever after. And anybody who wants to complain about that, well, you're not true to, to black people, you're not true to the black race, because you know, if you're truly about black and being black first, then uh, you're not going to want anybody from another side of the, uh, you know, across the fence. Why not? Again, as I said, black first means protecting you and your own first. 
You know, if you're black, the first person that's, that you have to be black first with is the person who stares back at you in the mirror. And I'm sorry if that sounds selfish, but that's reality. You are always the first person to look after yourself. You can talk all this altruistic stuff that you want to, but when we're squeezed out of our mama's womb, the very first thing we're doing is screaming and hollering and crying for attention. Me, 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 me. Gimme, 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 gimme. I'm the center of the universe. That's the way it works. We're not born out of this world uh, being, hey, mom, what can I do for you? It's, yo, ma, what can you do for me? How can you meet my needs? We are selfish creatures. That's our very basic nature. Now that we gain altruism as a result of broadening our minds and being social animals as we are, you know, grant it. You know, fine, let's go ahead and... Uh, you know, be as altruistic as you want to be. Be totally self-sacrificing if that's all you want to be. But it still starts with you waking up and deciding, I want to face this day. Because it always starts with, I have to face the world. And I have to face the world on whatever terms I have to face the world on. And I have to do it to where I get some kind of benefit out of it. So when you wake your ass up in the morning and you go to the bathroom, if uh, you don't love yourself or if you don't think that you're worth anything or if you think that you're not selfish, then tell you what, don't wash your ass after you take a dump in the morning. In fact, don't wash your ass at all. Don't take another shower. Don't take another bath. Oh, oh, but you... uh go in there and you doll yourself up and you wash yourself up and you clean yourself off and you groom your hair and you wear fresh clothes and all this other stuff. Why? It's because you care for yourself. You are always number one in everything you do. The first person you always care for is yourself. And that's whether you're black, white, red, green, whatever. So black first is always going to mean me and myself first. Then if you want to broaden it and expand it outward and say other people who look like me or other people who share culture with me, fine. But as I said, black first starts with the person in the mirror. That's what Michael Jackson's song was all about. You know, talking all this stuff about what goes on out in the, in the real world, you want to make a real change, you got to look in the mirror first. That's the first person you always start with. And so if you want to be black first, that's your number one. Now, with that said, if that person who looks back at themselves in the mirror says that I'm black first to my blackness, but I want to be altruistic, but I can't be 100% all-encompassing altruistic, oh yeah, I can go ahead and I can... Um, share my resources with the greater collective or I can share my knowledge with the greater collective but when it comes down to sharing my home and my bed with the greater collective or or to modify that with one of quote unquote my own the F with that because I can't find anybody on that same level where I'm at that's going to be a perfect match for me so you've got two options you either just say I'm just going to go ahead throughout the world alone by myself and I'll just continue doing what I'm doing to help the greater collective and I'll just uh, be without a partner because I want to keep it black but I, I want to keep it so black that I wouldn't dare uh, cross over and mess with anybody else but since I can't find quality within my own backyard then I'll just be a eunuch and I'll just go ahead and I'll just do as I've been doing and I'll just be part of, of, of uh, an individual because I can't form a full union with someone of my own background, my own racial, whatever, because I can't find anybody to have a meeting of the minds with. That's your first option. Or your second option is, I want to continue to help my community or to help the collective, I want to continue to, to sacrifice or to spend my time, my energy, my resources, my knowledge, all that good stuff, to help make a stronger black collective. 
because we're in such a miserable shambles that I want to help build us up. But in building us up, I still can't find anybody on that level. So I've got the option of either going without or I'll just say, I'll just go next door. There's plenty next door and plenty of people next door who seem to be meeting on the same level playing field that where I'm at. You know, we can have a meeting of the minds. And if she has to be somebody who's across that proverbial fence and she's down with the fact that, hey, I'm my own culture first and I'm going to be still be spending my time, and my energy, and my emphasis and my resources on those that are part of me or that are close to me or that I'm associated with in some sort of a way as part of a cultural or racial identity and she's good with that and she's down with it, then she won't get in my way with that and I'll continue to help my own. It just means that I didn't help my own in the sense of I wanted to bring somebody along with me to be a, um, a uh, mutual uh, intimate partner with because I couldn't find that kind of quality. And so that's where I come from where I've explained numerous times that in the case of black men who are debating this thing about whether or not to date interracially or what not, whatever. Again, reality. And reality is you are going to be a man first well before you're a black. Like I say, you can play black first after you get over that hump of being a man first. And I don't care how anybody wants to get up in my face like, no, I'm black first, no, I'm black first. Really? So, um... What's that thing dangling between your legs then? What's what's that? Black? Oh, so that's so, so that's what that is. That's that 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 little flaccid rod and those two little dangling ornaments that come attached to it. Uh we call that unit black. And so that makes you a black. So so that's that's what we have. That's 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 our that's our uh designation. We have uh blacks and women. That, that's, that's how we're set up. We're blacks and women. So the opposite of woman is black. Get the F out of here. So again, this whole concept of I'm black first. No, you're not. You're always going to be a man first based upon biology. See, black or being black or, cons or uh, this whole concept of black is just that. A concept it's a construct of our brains our society or our culture teaches us to be black or to identify ourselves as black but black is not a reality black is an idea or an imagining or a social construct but there's no social construct that makes you a man unless you want to talk about the behaviors of men but in physical actuality and physical reality one man is as another man is as another man is as another man is as another man so his skin could be yellow his skin could be red his skin could be pink his skin could be brown but the one thing that binds them all together is that penis and pair of testicles if they're formed um, naturally and uh, without defect so again man first black second Black is a state of mind. So this is where I saw this divergent between um, soul and black and um, black authority, where, again, this whole idea, this whole concept of you can't be black first and marry outside your race. You can't uh, be an effective uh, representative of the African community or African-American community and be married to a white woman or a woman of another race Oh, really? So um, let me just um, throw a few names out at you. Um, Frederick Douglass. Hmm? Hello? Um, what were some of the other names that I threw up that, um, oh, gosh, I'm, I'm having a brain freeze right now. But um, uh, in fact, you know, let me go back to, to uh, Bob Marley. I just got finished watching the uh, documentary movie about Bob Marley. You know, everybody holds Bob Marley up as this great black icon who did all these great, wonderful things for black identity, black music, black culture, all this other happy-do-da stuff. 
and um, how he essentially was a one-man war ender, you know, ended a conflict in his own home of Jamaica between warring factions, which were ruled by white people, didn't you know? Oops, can't, can't tell anybody that. I forgot, you know, uh, you know. But, you know, get, getting over that fact. But, of course, everybody likes to conveniently forget, unless they just don't know, that Bob Marley's man was a white man. Oh, his, yeah, his dad was a white man. He didn't like this because his mother was wa- raped by a white man. No, she wasn't. No, she wasn't. They had a legitimate relationship. They didn't get married, but they had a bona fide intimate relationship. So, uh, you know, scratch that idea altogether. But, you know, people still, they don't want to revoke uh, Bob Marley's black creds for, um, for having a, a white dad. Well, it's because he married a black woman. True enough. But still, that whole idea, that whole attitude that uh, you can't really be black or you can't represent black because you're somehow part of non-black, you know, that's, that's just totally um, outrageous. I mean, you know, Thurgood Marshall, you know, the first black Supreme Court justice, did everything he could to help uh, bring black people up to a to an, an equal standing, married a Filipino woman. So what? Do we take uh, Thurgood Marshall's black creds away from him, or said he didn't really do anything for the African American community because he didn't give one hundred percent to the African American community by c- committing himself to an African American woman? Are you crazy? So Thurgood Marsh- Marshall's black creds just null and void because he didn't marry a black woman. Everything he did for the African American community wasn't 100% because it was diluted because, or diluted, however you want to say it, because he married a non-black woman. So um, his, his, his efforts to uh, help African American communities, it's, you know, you know it, it wasn't really of any real value or it wasn't of, it's 100% pure value because it was, it was cut with a, uh, with a, uh, you know, some other alloy metals and whatnot. You know what? That's the kind of mentality and that's the kind of thinking that keeps us behind because of all this bickering and infighting, trying to determine who really qualifies as black or who's truly representative of blackness. As long as we keep bickering on this irrational stuff and, and, and this whole thing about interracial dating, that crap is a red herring already. You know, these Cheerios commercials and these Swiffer commercials and whatnot that are starting to emphasize African Americans and interracial relationships. And I'm like, it's about damn time. Why did it take so long? Why is it that we had to get comfortable with homosexual couples being portrayed on these television commercials long before interracial couples became acceptable? You know, what kind of bass backwards crap is that? Because we determined that interracial dating is somehow more, a more serious offense than homosexual couples uh, going in, getting married, and adopting children. You know, so we want to normalize the, uh, the clearly unnatural and unwholesome and destructive to our community and to our society, but then we want to bicker and holler and talk about, oh, what a great affront it is for uh, one race of person to marry somebody of another race of, of God. Yo, get the hell out of here. You know, if you don't want that kind of help for the black community because somebody's black creds are not up to your standard, then you know what? Just just be done with it. Don't even waste your time with us. Tell us to keep our money. Keep Tell us to keep our resources or tell us to keep our time. Tell us to keep our knowledge to ourselves or go peddle it someplace else where they might benefit from it or appreciate it. You know, go ahead and make our uh, um, tutti fruity kids and uh, that are really not black or all this other stuff, and take all that time, effort, money, resources, knowledge, and everything, and just not even bother wasting it in, into your community at all because you won't appreciate it. Just go ahead and tell us that because we're not truly really black or we're not living up to the high standards of what you set as being the echelon of true blackness. That attitude is always, 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 always going to keep us at the bottom of the totem pole. 
So go ahead, take away our black creds because, you know, we're not up to par to where, you know, our blackness is, you know, we're really black, we're real blacks because we keep it black. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll live our lives, you know, uh, in total misery. You know, Chris Rock said it. Was it Chris Rock or Tucker, one of those two, where he said, you know, people say, say that life is short. He says, no, life is long. If you hook up yourself with somebody who's not going to be a match for you, who's not going to be an ideal partner for you, life is long. Because your life is going to be one endless misery after another. And so if somebody decides that, hey, I don't want that kind of misery, and if I can find happiness and peace of mind by dating outside of my race, I'm going to do that. And if in so doing that, I still want to contribute to those who are part of my own culture or my own background or my own race or my own heritage or however you want to describe that, I'll do that too. But if in so doing, you want to take away my black cred because oh, uh, I married a white woman or I married a Hispanic woman or I married an Asian woman, so, so nothing I do is ever going to 100% benefit the, the black community, then just tell us to go get the hell out of, it, out of your way and uh, take our resources elsewhere then. You know, you know, be real about it. Don't talk about, oh, well, we'll, we'll still accept your, your help, and we'll still accept your resources, and we'll still accept it. No, you can't be two-faced about it. you got to be real about it 100% all the way. Either you want the help, and you want the resources, and you want the knowledge, and the wisdom, and the guidance, and all that stuff, despite the fact that we didn't marry a black woman because, according to us, we couldn't find the same quality that we demanded. Or you just go ahead and run your little pissy party and throw your little temper tantrum and say, like, you didn't keep it black by marrying a sister. So you, you're not really black. You're not really there. But, oh, but we still want your resources. No, -uh. Can't have it both ways. you got to pick and choose. Either revoke our black cred card altogether and don't accept our resources because you decided that we ain't black enough for you. Or just get to the real realization, it's like, look, you know, we are black regardless of who or what we marry. Or who we, who we decide to spend our intimate time with. Or what color children that we decide to produce. But that we're still going to identify with our own community, with our own collective. And we see the importance of trying to build it up and raise it up. That even though I took a personal step of bringing somebody onto, into um, my camp who's not part of that collective, but who's with me 100% as I continue to help bring those who are part of my collective along for the ride and to help pull us all together, and she wants to share in that, then you got to accept that and get off this whole trip about why didn't you marry a sister? Because... Because it's none of your damn business. That's why I didn't marry a sister. And you have to accept that or just tell us to get GTFO or whatever that acronym is. So there it is. That's, that's my whole take on it. That's the way I've always been about it. Look, you have to do what makes you happy. If it means dating out, date out. If it means finding a sister and if you can tolerate what what it means what what it means that you're bringing to the table if she's not of your high standards and you want to sacrifice uh, someone who doesn't have all those high standards just for the sake of keeping it black if that's what you want to do have a happy if you decide that well I can't find it within my own backyard but I still want to keep it black and I want to go to Caribbean or uh, somewhere in South Africa or Rhodesia or wherever the heck it is and find it there have a happy do what makes you happy as a man. Or on the flip side, if you're a black woman, same principle applies to you. If you want to marry a European man and he makes you happy, you go ahead and do that if it makes you happy. And if, if in so doing, you still want to hold on and retain your black creds and you still want to do things for the black community, again, have a happy welcome to the club, but... If anybody gets in your face and says, well, we don't accept you because you married a, a, someone with a pink sausage, then you can either tell them you can go your own effing way or you can tell them, like, look, if you want what I bring to the table, you have to accept what I bring to the table also. 
you know, it's just like those uh, those little dating profiles they say, love me, love my dog. And me, who is not a dog lover, if I met somebody who demanded that, hey, if you're going to be intimate with me, you're going to have to accept my dog, and I've got a choice to make. I, I got to accept this woman and accept her dog, or I just say, look, it's either me or the dog. Now, if you want me, dog's got to go. But if you're that attached to the dog, then, okay, I have to look elsewhere then because I ain't living with no dogs. And so that's what you got to, what you have to decide. You know, if you're going to ac accept and acknowledge and allow that certain configurations are going to be the way that they are, you either have to accept it as it is or you just got to reject it outright. But you can't play this little two-faced thing such as, Oh well, uh, well I'll accept your your resources, your this, that, and the other, but you're still not part of the club. You, I still won't take you in. Well, that's just like saying with the uh, with the dating profile with the woman that says "love me, love my dog." Well, no, I'm not going to accept your dog, but uh, I'll I'll still uh, sleep with you from time to time. You know, be a friend with benefits thing, and she has every right to say, "Hell no, I'll, I'm I'm not going to go for that." So again, decide what you want and then stick to your guns. Don't try to play, play both sides of this whole angle here. If being black and having black cred is that important to you to where you say, in order for us to accept your blackness and to accept your black wisdom and knowledge and, and, and uh, resources, then you gotta come to the table with us with a black woman around your arms. And if that's your standard, and if that's what you demand, then, as I said, Turn away whatever would have come your way, and don't whine and complain about it when uh, it turns out it's like, why aren't they using their resources to help our community? They got all these resources, and all this, and all that. because you said you didn't want it. In so many words. So again, get over yourselves. Pick and choose. Decide what you want to do, and decide who qualifies to play in your little uh, uh, treehouse club. But, as I said, and as I will continue to say, you cannot have it both ways. So you decide what works for you, and you decide whether or not it's worth it for you to take that position and to be so rigid about it. Because, as I said, I don't have a horse to race in this game, so I could care less one way or the other. So this has to do with what you want to do, how you want to see things uh, proceed from this moment on. And that's my, my two points. I've got a phone to answer. End of line.